The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour. Uh, when we left yesterday, uh, we were down maybe 20, er, and maybe at the end of the show, well, it may have been flat, but I think we were down about, during the show, down about 30 points on the S&P cash. Uh, we're, what, about 110 or 120 points higher than that now on the S&P. Uh, up another 33 on the day. Let me update that just to make sure. Uh, eh, we're at 20 on the day. Uh, 41.75, so uh, eh, a little bit. But uh, it's been kind of light and variable, uh, as they like to say in the weather. Uh, pretty much everybody now just taking a big breath and waiting for the Fed tomorrow. Uh, the question is whether or not uh, the Fed will do some kind of Pearl Harbor uh, my guess is they will not, and that they used uh, job boning uh, to get a lot of people out of the market and let the market do the work instead of them actually have to raise rates as quickly and fast as they've been hinting they would. But, uh, you know, a variety of things have come out. Maybe it will, uh, you know, I have a feeling that the market's price for, or kind of price for, what, half a percent? If we just get a quarter, I think that probably uh, will put us off to the races and we'll make yet another high by Friday. Uh, that may take us back up to some level where we're uh, thinking about shorting again. But I think it's going to happen this week. Uh, again, first of the week. Uh, yesterday, uh, just about, uh, you could almost set your uh, watch on it, and that is uh, fun money coming in yesterday. And a little bit more coming in today. But again, uh, around 2 o'clock, a lot of the fun guys, uh, yeah, you know, the hangover's kind of worn off. and The coffee started to work. And yeah, they're, they've had a couple of meetings and ruminated. I always like people ruminating. Anyway, they've ruminated and they're ready to throw some money at the market. And, uh, yeah, it's just mostly throwing money at the market for the most part. Uh, as always, though, it's great when you come here at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So, yeah, we've got that. But, uh, yeah, the one thing that we probably don't have a great deal of is a lot of volume. And it's been around the 7 billion share market at the time we started the show for the last week. So we're not getting a lot of hints there. Uh, just a hat, hair lighter today, but that's not a big deal. 6.8 uh, billion shares as we start the show. Eh, 6.8, 6.9, which is uh, just 200 million less than yesterday at this time. So not a big deal yet. We're not getting any uh, burning bushes out here saying that we've hit the highs. Uh, now, the question is whether the Fed is going to be nasty tomorrow. Uh, are they going to talk to Janet? Are they going to call her uh, Miss Jackson? Or are they going to be nasty? Well, I don't know. But I'm thinking that uh, by the preponderance, they're probably going to be rather sanguine. And the market's probably going to take it as a sign that uh, there's a little bit off of it. Uh, as I said, we could have a, a fairly decent amount of a bounce. Even the TLTs uh, see, seeing just a little bit of love today at 118.53, up about a percent. But I think they're probably going to want to do something that maybe kind of mellows the market out. Um, as I said, I think what we're probably going to do is see kind of some kind of slow plotting move higher right now. Uh, is there a chance we retest uh, the lows of Friday, Monday? Uh, yeah. Is it a big one? Probably not. If you didn't throw up then, you're probably not going to throw up now. 
uh, they'd really have to have something else. I don't see a lot in earnings coming out this week or anything else. It's all about the Fed. So I think just kind of sideways and when the market doesn't go down, a lot of these people that have gotten short will probably slowly start to uh, uh, to uh, uh, cover. And the market could just kind of meander up into the end of the month. But uh, we'll see. But, uh, you know, everybody wants to be short all the time. And after you have a big move, probably the worst time to be short, the market's going to digest it. It's not going to believe it. It's going to go back up. You're going to have no volume. And then the whole thing starts back over again if we're in the bear market I believe we are in. 877-927-6648. Uh, they'll huff and they'll puff and they'll do a quarter. <laughs> well, that's, uh, uh, yeah, ruminating. I used to have a, uh, a uh, grandmother that talked about chewing, uh, chewing the cud, uh, which uh, if you've not had cows, you do not know the reference. But uh, that's it. I don't think there's a whole lot out here. Uh, not going to be surprised to see maybe a little bit of selling pressure tomorrow morning and all the volume deteriorate. But uh, this market, uh, especially some stocks, are set up for some probably huge squeezes. Even if the market does nothing, I think we're going to probably get some squeezes in at least a handful of stocks. Uh, and some of them could be rather big. I don't know if they're going to be AMC, uh, Robinhood kind of big. But I think uh, there's a few stocks out there that we could see uh, 50, 100 percent moves in. Um, just because literally there are no shares left to borrow on. So, uh, you know, when you get too short, you want to be real worried uh, that someone's going to do something that's going to light the market on fire. Uh, I talk about uh, reminiscence of a stock operator. Uh, and it, like I said, there's not a day that goes by that something out of that book doesn't uh, appear to me as some kind of wisdom, almost like the Bible of trading. But there's a part in the book where he's uh, stuck in some trade. I think he was in corn, and he was on the wrong side of it. Uh, and uh, kind of like now, it was going straight up, and it could have wiped him out. Uh, so what he did, he, he took uh, whatever money he had left, and he sold as much corn as, or as much wheat as he could, because uh, there was no way that they were going to do anything on corn for him. Anyway, selling the wheat spooked them and made them think uh, that uh, there was something big to be had, uh, and maybe in the weather or something else. And suddenly, everybody started letting go, go of the corn. And you know, there's a lot of that in the market, market manipulation, but. Uh, kind of six degrees of separation. And uh, the thing is, you don't want to overstay uh, uh, your welcome, especially if you're on the wrong side. Uh, but markets tend to crawl on up, even in bear markets, only to jump off the top of the building later on. We'll be back in a minute. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right. 
information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Turn. It's always about history and something I saw and listened to last night I knew was obviously wrong. And of course, uh, not surprised to see uh, news uh, folks not check their stories before they begin. But uh, uh, let's do a little history and we'll talk about how this uh, intersects with the stock market from a ways ago and how it affects us today. <coughs> And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Last night, uh, I heard somebody say, well, it's never, ever happened. The Supreme Court has never leaked anything. Da, 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 da. Well, as a student of market history, because past is prologue, I knew this was untrue. Unfortunately, we saw people from the media and even politicians uh, uh, saying that. But it patently untrue. Um, in 1919, there was a guy named Ashton Embry. Ashton uh, had been a, uh, a, a uh, clerk for the Supreme Court, a, reg a fairly new thing at the time. Uh, but um, he got to see a lot of decisions before they were made. Uh, not so many uh, headline uh, kind of decisions uh, back then about... Uh, about social issues. They were mostly things about business uh, for the most part. There were a few uh, big cases, but most of it had to do with business and most of it had to do with either steel or the railroads back at the time. Uh, but uh, old Ashton, he was an enterprising guy. Uh, he did a little bit more than uh, most clerks in uh, that he would get a hold of... Uh, of uh, rulings by the Supreme Court, and I, probably five or six rather large ones. Uh, but in 1919, it was uh, one with the Southern Pacific Railroad in which they uh, actually committed fraud when applying for the land. Uh, and uh, the Supreme Court was going to come down uh, and uh, the stock lost 10% uh, the price the next day. And I think somewhere around 40% uh, the price of the stock uh, over the next week. Uh, but uh, 
he was uh, he he didn't have a lot of money himself, at least to start with. But over the years, uh, he would uh, help out uh, people uh, in Wall Street and give them the old uh, tip of the hat, nod of the head, and let them know that things were coming. Um, they all knew it just because so many people were shorting right before the big news came out. And it almost uh, occurred almost over 10 years. Anyway, Ashton Embry, um, when a newspaper uh, article was uh, ready to appear, I think it was in mid-December of, 20, uh, of 1919, uh, quit and uh, told his boss that uh, he was going to work at a bakery. Well, little did he know that he owned the bakery, uh, and uh, most of the bakery was, uh, well, paid for with uh, money that he got back from these guys uh, on Wall Street that he gave the insider heads up on. Uh, of course, uh, the the only real proof they ever really got was uh, this uh, Southern Pacific thing. Uh, after putting somebody uh, undercover, uh, but as most things, uh, the undercover guy, eh, kind of crooked. <laughs> uh, and certainly wouldn't stand up. But the other thing they figured out after trying to prosecute him for 10 years after this, it wasn't against the law. What the, we did find out is it took till 20, or excuse me, 1937 before there was any kind of insider trading laws. It's been amended a few times. Uh, we got an uptick rule in the early 30s, I think 1933. But uh, there was a lot of... Uh, uh, shenanigans going on and uh, when you look at what he made he put uh, on the last one he put down $600 and you think okay that's not bad well that's about $17,000 in today's money you could buy basically the equivalent still uh, not billions right but the one thing you don't understand is that these guys shorted right before the close and the uh, news was coming out the next morning uh, they could also have 10 to 1 leverage, which they had. So his uh, $17,000 was actually more like $170,000 and uh, worth of uh, shorts. And again, in 1990, uh, $1919. Anyway, uh, he would go to uh, actually own, uh, I think, six or eight bakeries around uh, the area that he went to live in and became a decent citizen, but all funded uh, by nefarious action. And as we said, uh, people really didn't, especially people in Congress, didn't know what to do. And it took till 1937. Of course, we talk about insider trading now with uh, the uh, members of uh, the House and the Senate uh, and a lot of noise about it. But uh, we've got uh, a Speaker of the House who's made about $250 million from uh, deals uh, with uh, mostly banks uh, that uh, they are supposed to actually uh, be uh, overseeing. Uh, but uh, you know what? Probably not, probably not much going to happen. Um, there's been a lot of talk about it this year, but uh, guess what? A poison pill in the bill would make it so that uh, it would be impossible for any judge to actually sit on a case uh, of uh, this in which either a congressman or a senator actually did trade on insider knowledge. But anyway, one of the more interesting stories of uh, the early days, and of course as soon as we figure out one way uh, to cut off people doing stuff like this, they find yet another. But yes, he made some real dough, ended up dying, I think, in 1963-ish, uh, and owned uh, eight major bakeries uh, across the Midwest. Uh, but uh, he started all, like a lot of these folks, with uh, uh, dirty, dirty, stinking money. Anyway, uh, always history, and uh, how we got uh, both the downtick rule and uh, insider trading, at least for those people not in uh, politics. In 1919, it hit the front page and started something that would take another 18 years to get done. 
Okay, so what else do we have? Uh, let's take a quick look at some of the bigger movers and shakers, as I like to call them, the usual suspects. Um, you had some nice bounces off the lows, uh, like Microsoft, uh, and uh, it's just kind of been going sideways. That's not uncommon uh, for bounces off a low, even in, in a bear market. Um, but you've got about half the volume you actually had yesterday. You may close under the three by three, but you're on uh, the gap up, and that gap happened up just a few days ago on 63 billion shares. Wow. Uh, and, and down today, just on 15. So uh, not a lot of pressure going in to the Fed. Back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. You can certainly give me a call at 877-927-6648. And, of course, you can always post a message in the den and email me at path at tfnn.com as we take a look and see it. Uh, as we said, some of the usual suspects that everybody's always looking at. Applied materials did come off the bottom as holding the 3 by 3 It's down on about fourth of the volume uh, that it had yesterday and on the gap up. On the 28th, uh, it had uh, 7.4 million shares. Uh, today, we've got about 3 million shares. So um, kind of an inside day, but not surprising in front of a Fed meeting. 
the rest of the usual suspects everybody's uh, looking at. Um, you've got a little bit of what could be a uh, Gartley pattern, but uh, kind of a smaller one uh, in AMD. Uh, the Probably the interesting thing is uh, you're up against a $91 high, the April 29th that had 82 million shares, you got 83. So it's, uh, you, you got a bounce, uh, you're back up into it with about the same amount of volume. Uh, the down day back on the 21st of March had 76 million shares. So not as bad as I said yesterday, a lot of things could be a lot worse and uh, they just aren't uh, in most stocks, some are. But uh, we'll continue to keep a look on them. Uh, other stocks out there that people have been uh, prognosticating the end is nigh is NVIDIA. Uh, yesterday, 57, 000, uh, 57 million shares. The uh, day before that, 50 million shares. 57 million shares and a low at 50 million shares. Today you got about 33 million shares so far. That one's a little bit heavier of the two. Take a look at the SMHs real quick. Um, all of these have a kind of a similar pattern out here. Uh, gap up on some decent volume of about 9.5 million shares in the SMHs. Uh, that was on the 28th. Uh, you go 7 million, 8 million, uh, and you got about 3 million today. So you really haven't broken a previous high out here. You're just going sideways, uh, but you are uh, sitting on the uh, upward side of the three by three. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other ones out here. A little bit of a bounce in Boeing today, very light volume so far. Uh, this one may take a little bit more before it turns higher. I think the Fed may need to do something. Of course, the stink on it from earnings, still a bit there. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's not much in the way of uh, shorts left to hop on that thing. Let's take a look at uh, Bank of America. Uh, to, to This one did gap up today. Uh, you're back up into some 80 million share days. Uh, about 31 million shares right now. So you broke the lows. You didn't really do it so badly on volume in this one, about 64 million shares to 80. Uh, and you meandered around, but you are going to close above the three by three. So you may need a few more days. But uh, tomorrow, um, if you want to be looking for stocks that could have some room to run if the Fed is rather benign, uh, you might want to look at the banks because they look like they're turning around. Uh, as we said yesterday, there was a rather large uh, double repo pattern uh, setting up on corn, uh, the ETF. Uh, you've got a little bit more, not much in the way of volume today. But, of course, uh, this was another one that we were talking about uh, finding a confluence level somewhere around, uh, if I'm not mistaken go back a little bit longer, about 26 bucks, uh, which is not the end of the world for these things, but uh, probably over a little bit over the uh, tips of their skis. But you're getting uh, not a lot of confirmation today, but certainly more. Uh, this could pull back. The first level is going to be about 27.80, and then the next one about 26. Uh, at those levels, you might look at after this big run of finding another position in them if you want. Uh, FDX, I want to take a look at this one, um, especially on energy. Um, when you had a fairly nice uh, retracement yesterday uh, after getting hit early in the morning uh, in the giblets, that's a technical term, by the way, uh, for uh, crude oil. Uh, and we're off two bucks now. I think it was 100, went to 105 on the close. We're now back a couple of bucks. Uh, just the con, uh, the uh, normal consolidation of a, a rather large move higher, in my opinion, so far. Uh, but uh, not seeing much uh, of that action transferring to companies like FedEx. Uh, you're not going lower. Uh, but today, again, pretty much light volume ahead of the Fed. Uh, let's take a quick look at GLD. Um, and yeah, if uh, 
If they're benign, you could see a move in gold. Right now in the GLD, uh, you're going to have very strong resistance on any bounce, and that would be at 181 to 1874. So you've got three gaps down. Um, could you f go fill that gap around 180? You could, uh, but uh, you're really filling or uh, kind of finishing out here in ABC on the way down. So it wouldn't be surprising to see a rather large pop in gold. But again, tomorrow, uh, depending on how benign they are, um, could be kind of interesting. Okay, question about the spies. So let's take a quick look at that and what we have. Um, you went down below the previous level. We talked about how light the volume was uh, on Friday. You got a little bit more uh, toward the washout in the close. But the February 24th low in the spies at 410, which was my target and why I was talking about it for the last couple of weeks, and we were looking for a low around that low in spies and that uh, we kind of hit it on Friday. Uh, we tried to wash a bunch of folks out yesterday, but closed back above uh, that level. And probably the more interesting thing is that you had 145 million shares on the worst day on Friday. Yesterday, you only, uh, you only had 158, but that's against the uh, benchmark of that February 24th low with 214 million shares. So you, uh, it wasn't great, but you didn't get at least that time everybody to cough up their cookies. Uh, that means that maybe a bounce, and in this case, 435-ish, uh, would not be beyond the scope of reason for just a bounce and a downtrend. If you had very light volume, uh, then the next move down you might think of as busting 410. Uh, if we get volume on the way back up, then uh, maybe it chews through that 433, 433-ish level out here uh, that is confluence. 8797-6648 is the number that I find you calling right now and asking me some questions. Okay, what else do we have out here? Uh, question on Tesla. Um Again, I don't know if technicals are all that great with Tesla. Um, I found on the long term, eight fat hits they are. It's uh, a light volume bounce. And again, are one of the most uh, uh, sensitive to interest rates. So uh, I think that's the problem. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. And we get back, uh, probably not going along uh, for the next 24 hours until the Fed comes out. And then we'll have a little bit of fireworks, actually 23 hours and about 15 minutes from now. But uh, eh, not a lot of, you know, just a lot of people standing back waiting, I think, for the Fed to see if there's anything worth going on. A uh, question from Ron about Workday. Take a quick look at that. See what we have. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, you broke the lows and you got a little bit more of the way of the volume. Um, 2.8 million shares on the 26th to, to 1.6 today. So, yeah, could you? Some of these stocks are still selling off a little bit but eh, not as hard as you would think Let's check in on royal gold we talked about that one yesterday uh you got a little bit of a bounce out of it yesterday um or i mean today uh you're awful close to that support level you're going to close over the three by three but with on no volume my i would love to see uh maybe pre-fed if they are going to be benign that you go through the 127 on royal gold uh, maybe 126 or something, and then you close back above 127 and a quarter or so. Uh, but uh, that would be kind of the best thing for it. If you're thinking long on gold, I wouldn't be forecasting it. Uh, but if it does it, I would react and say that it's bottomed out. Um, question on Micron. Uh, what do we have here. Uh, still one of the better looking uh, tech stocks uh, for a bounce. You don't have a whole lot yet. Again, I think we're going to need to settle out, but eh, probably doing the best. Got to 71.96 today. My guess is this is on its way to 78.46. And at that point, maybe you would think about a short again. But uh, you went through the previous low of about 25 million shares. Uh, you uh, went below it on April 27th. You popped right back above it and eh, decent volume okay. Uh, just about 9 million shares today. But again, all this stuff tends to be a lot of uh, who shot John until uh, 2 o'clock tomorrow. Okay, another question from one of our gentle listeners, watchers, viewers. Uh, on the XME, um, you had a doji yesterday. The volume was a little bit more than I would have liked. You're still under the three by three. It went right to it today and is kind of turtling and uh, prairie dogging back uh, down a little bit. Volume's eh, probably going to be in line with what we had yesterday. Um, you want another close kind of above and then maybe another one below. And then the next one above it would probably be the one to buy. 
So that may take a little bit more to sell, uh, settle out. Uh, the TLT, we talked about it. You do have a bounce, uh, kind of anemic, about half the volume. Um, if the Fed is uh, going to fold uh, up to 132 tomorrow, uh, not all in one hitch, by the way, but if they're really benign, uh, that's uh, where I will want to go short next time. Uh, I'm not exactly sure whether it could ever get there. Uh, to, 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 to what else did we talk about? Uh, another request to look at Qualcomm. Um, again, the pride of the field at the moment. Um, you've got three days, really four days out here uh, after the gap higher. Uh, you did have a sign of strength with 31 million shares. You got about four and 0.4 right now on kind of just insider days. Uh, maybe another day or two before this starts heading up. Real resistance comes in at 149 uh, to 154-ish. Uh, so, eh, I think you got a little bit more room to run in that before it could turn lower. If you're thinking short out here. Uh, to, to, is this one I wanted to look at? Maztec? Yeah. A little less. I yeah, could it bounce back up to ninety? Yeah. Uh, we'll see what J.P. Morgan's doing today. Uh, as I said, this one probably looks fairly good to one thirty-four. Uh, it's not a whole lot in the scheme of the downtrend it's had. Uh, but yeah, one thirty-three, one thirty-two-ish. Looks like that's where we're going to start. Resistance 134 is probably going to be a brick wall on the bounce, but weirder things have happened. Uh, but maybe you get there on a very uh, benign Fed. Uh, if you're thinking about shorting, that's where you're going to have to see it before the risk reward starts picking up, at least in my opinion. Uh, okay. Uh, let's take a look at UNG. Um, you are and did come back up and retest the previous high of April 18th that had 20 million shares. Have uh, you done it today with 7 million shares? Uh, it didn't quite bust the top, but it did enough. You don't have much in the way of volume. Uh, I would watch out. Uh, that is a valid sell signal, in my opinion, on UNG. Uh, we're getting to the summer part. It may not come back as far as a lot of people think. But my guess is you are probably going to see this on a sell note uh, going back uh, uh, probably that $22 mark, probably late summer, and then see it pick back up again. Um, it is or could be a double repo, but you'd really need it to pull back a great deal before it ever got there. But, uh, you know, you've got... Uh, fairly good setup out here, as I said. Uh, I can get that to reset. So, yeah, um, I'd watch. I think this probably uh, just because the seasonality has the opportunity to come back around 22 bucks. Remember, uh, as more and more people uh, uh, decide that it's time to go back and mine or not mine, but drill for oil and pump it and shale it. There's always a, a lot more natural gas than they can ever use. So this may be, if I was thinking long crude uh, at this point, I might be wanting to think short UNG as a pair straight on it. Okay, what else do we have out here? Okay, and FLX. Anything going on in this one? Nah, I think it's just dead money here for a little while. Let's uh, take a look at Disney and see if it's done any better. Uh, but I think most of the streamers out here, little or nothing on the bounce. Today's bounce, pretty weak on Disney with uh, 8 million shares. Uh, what else do we have? Amazon's really not a pure play. But we'll see uh, what it's done now that it's uh, kind of blown up. Um, at best, you've got an inside day with light volume on Amazon. So no real signal out of this right now. A lot of hurry up and wait, but uh, eh, 
We're almost down to 23 hours and 10 minutes. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we return, uh, Jay wants to know where you think uh, UPXY would come back. Uh, if we get the uh, market affirming uh, non-threatening uh, tunes of Jay Powell tomorrow, uh, my thought is it could come back to about 14 bucks, maybe 1350. Generally, this thing decays uh, faster than ice cream melts on Georgia asphalt in mid-July. So just keep an eye on it. But you don't have – remember, you don't have to go higher to kill this off. All you have to do is quit going lower. Uh, and, yeah, in these bounces, and it went right to the gap that it had down uh, for uh, to, to on the 16th of March. Uh, got into it. You were down on 69 million shares. You got into it with 121 million shares and gave it all up yesterday. So my guess is that uh, everybody that was long this thing vamoosed and sold it to uh, bag holders. Uh, and you're back down into the gap today. But my guess is you're probably going to work your way back down. The next support level is at about $14.40. But uh, when this thing's on the other opposite side of it, it just melts incredibly fast. So maybe I'm wrong on the Fed tomorrow. We'll know, like I said, within 23 hours now in five minutes. Uh, but uh, eh, not much else is going on in that. But uh, I think uh, we're either going sideways or higher uh, out of tomorrow. Uh, I'm in AMT, says Marie. 
Uh, well, let's have a nice de- bounce and a decline. Uh, well, he kind of broke through already. But uh, the big problem you have is just overhead resistance. Um, 247, 245-ish is resistance. So, yeah, could you get a bit of a bounce? But pretty small. Um, I'd rather buy this above 250 bucks and know that it broke through the resistance level uh, than be in it right now. I think more than anything, you're probably talking just sideways consolidation, but uh, and there's not that much to the upside on this. Sell when you can, not when you have to. Uh, I'll join you back tomorrow when it's going to be time to rumble with a Jay Powell. Uh, So when you can, not when you have to. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.